Hello, this is Austin Hester, and this is my presentation on ambiguity. Uh, so, what is ambiguity? Uh, it's the multiple meanings. A uh, word can have multiple meanings, or a phrase could have multiple ways to like parse the grammar of it. Um, so, yeah, the lexical ambiguity is when the word has multiple definitions and syntactic where a phrase has multiple grammatical parses um, so that's sort of the background needed for garden path sentences which are initially ambiguous and cause you to see a noun as a verb or yeah so they're very confusing at first and you'll see some examples but uh, this is a paper on BERT uh, it's a transformer model and it shows garden path effects very similar to humans so yeah the problem is garden path sentences uh, sentences which mislead with ambiguity at first until a syntactic inconsistency forces the reader to reconsider their interpretation so they call it a temporal ambiguity because at, at first it's ambiguous so you read it as the horse raced past the barn the, fe the barn fell and so it, that doesn't fit syntactically so you have to go and find an alternate way to read this for it to syntactically make sense um, so this yeah this is, would be like a syntactical um, ambiguity here, uh, but it, it does clarify itself at the end when you see that's not right, that can't be right. So um, they kind of just at first trick you. So there's a few examples here. The horse raced past the barn fell while I was surfing the internet went down. The boat floated down the river, sank. Uh, so there's some motivation. It's ambiguity is unavoidable. Um, and these garden path sentences confuse humans a lot. So they wanted to see if it would confuse BERT type models. Um, so to find out, they used a question answering task. Um, various types of tasks here um, where it says three I was going to put examples but you'll see those on the next slide but essentially they just compared humans to models and then models amongst themselves there's four models two Bert and then two Roberta um, so yeah everybody shows about the same average decline um, when going from like a standard control question to like the garden path examples so they're intentionally confusing and everybody at like the models and humans all decline about the same percent 15 so uh, here's examples of these uh, so the agent matrix that's who is performing the action the patient is yeah the recipient there and then they ask the m models or the humans like all right so now who was it who got the gift card um, so they ask about like the entities there on the, the left side and then there's a, a second question answering uh, task here for the action and they ask kind of like the action so they, they include the action in the question on the left um, but on the right, they they include the like the agent and patient in the question, but they're asking the action. So they just want to see both sides. So that there's like unidir unidirectional and bidirectional. So it turns out humans are a lot better at going one way. So they they'll get the like I I, I don't remember which one the the paper said was better but there's like multiple question types but um the humans got it 
in one way, but like we're wrong in the other direction. Whereas when the models were wrong ab about like a sentence, then they were usually wrong both ways. So if the, the model was able to put the two and two together, it would put the actions to the entities no matter how the question was posed. But the, the humans would, who they would only go one way, but they would understand more than the models. It's just that they would do the one way and they couldn't answer the other question. So yeah, the results, they show decline. Um, yeah, the humans are better sem at semantically connecting words further away from each other too. So um, at the, like a pronoun gets further from its like intended subject, it'll be more confused with a model than a human would get. Um, and then humans often guess, and then models will just restate the question or something unrelated if they don't know. And then they also, uh, a probe implementation, so they just essentially saw the hidden layers of each model and like what word mapped to which word. Um, and they they took the, the highest performing layer here. Um, so uh, I don't know, that kind of adds some bias to it. So um, I don't know how much this one had, had like an effect. So uh, it confirms, it does confirm that they confuse them and all the models confuse them the same, even though they fine tuned it with the training data. Um, so quality, uh, it was fair sample size, four models, and I think it was like seven or 800 questions. Um, and then the study design had the Q and A, which was good. And then the analysis of the representations and the hidden layers. Uh, I, I think choosing the best performing hidden layer of each model instead of like somehow the sum or average of them. Um, I think that added, detracted from that part of it. And then they didn't really find an effect. So it was about the same um, for humans versus models there. Um, for data analysis, yeah, the, the highest performing layer uh, was taken and a lot of inconsistent results between the BERT style models and just like the, the types of questions they, they were good at. Um, and, but it did show that humans and models alike are like, have trouble with garden path sentences. Um, so there's a lot of resources out there how to avoid them in your writing. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you.